Today we're going to be looking at traffic signals one last time. It's our last piece in the traffic signal section. And we're looking at coordination today, which is in a, kind of an advanced piece, but in a very important one in the modern uh, traffic signal world. And coordination is how we move people through quickly uh, and keep people moving and try to uh, minimize the number of stops on a through corridor. Uh, through that. So this is what uh, kind of coordination looks like. And if you've got two traffic signals in a row, so this is at intersection one here and then up at intersection two, right through there. If you're moving northbound, you get the green light here as you travel north. Maybe it takes you, you know, 25, 30, something like that seconds to get here. It would be nice that when you left this on green, by the time you get to the next traffic signal, it would also be green, right? And that's coordination. That's trying to, that's trying to time these lights so that cars keep moving straight through. And a group of cars we call a platoon. And so the platoon is going to move through from one intersection up to the next, right, through there. And we, the offset is the uh, difference in time between the start of this one's phase and the start of that one's equal phase going in whatever direction you're looking at. So in our case, it would have been northbound. You could look at that. And then we call that the offset. And they're measuring it here from the yellow time. You can just pick whatever time you want. Uh, and that offset will be the same. So it could be the start of the green to the start of that one's green. <clears throat> that would be the same offset uh, as they're picking the yellow here, which is fine, right? And their offset uh, in this example is 30 seconds. And so they're saying it, maybe it takes you 30 seconds to move from here up to here. In which case, if you left from here, we'd be traveling in kind of a diagonal because this is time along the x-axis and we have distance along the y-axis, right? And so some slope of line in here would be your speed right, through there. So if it's a 30 mile per hour uh, speed limit, then the slope of that line, uh, however many seconds it takes you to go, um, over a certain amount of distance, hopefully it'd work out to be whatever 30 miles per hour is in that. And so that's that's where how we calculate offset. And so it's a, that's our basic uh, definition of what an offset is. So we can look at how that's developed uh, more through that. And again, we've got uh, these two traffic signals. This has got phase six is going northbound, phase two is going southbound, right through there. And you can see that uh, for this is a two-way uh, traffic flow in situation. Start of green, here's our northbound band, and this is the slope of this line is uh, equivalent to the speed that people are traveling at, the primary speed there, right? And they get here and it's still green at this north one, right? And people who leave this north signal and head south, they're this southbound band, this uh, gray colored one. At the start of green, they move south and they it is still green when they get to this uh, intersection down here, right? And they can still get through. The last tail end of that band probably can't. They're on yellow. And yeah, maybe uh, that's still the effective green. But that's our, so we can actually get uh, coordination to work in both directions, right? Both north and south bend southbound and so that's that's what this is showing we can get that coordination to work in both directions people releasing here at the start of green are in this blue band people releasing here at the start of the green on this signal are in the southbound band through here and this one looks like the offset is actually set to zero um, but these green bands are are big enough people can still arrive there when the other one comes through uh, right so both north and southbound can work this is a, a little more complicated example. We've got four intersections now. And so if you, uh, this is what we really want to do on larger uh, corridors like this, is that when you release people here at uh, this first signal, uh, L, and move through, is that they can always hit some portion of the green time through that, right? And people moving southbound are going in this direction, right? And they can go through here. They get green, green, maybe a little bit cut off there. They still get green there, they still get green there. So this, in this way, coordination is working in both directions. And you can do that. And typically, uh, the problem is, is that a really busy intersection, you may not have as much green time in that southbound movement as you would in on other intersections. And so that restricts, uh, we call the green band, that restricts the amount of cars you can get through at a certain time in a, in a size, sizable platoon through that. The other problem, this is these are all equally spaced, which is fine in kind of urban cores where the you know, traditional neighborhoods where the, the roads are evenly spaced. You can 
mathematically, it's almost impossible to get uh, two-way coordination uh, if you've got odd spaces right uh, through there. Or it, it makes it much more difficult to get this these bands to line up. So if you had, um, if this is a quarter mile, the next one's a third of a mile, and then it's a quarter mile again, then a tenth of a mile, you know, that odd staggering is going to make this really difficult to achieve, right? Unless, you know, maybe that one with that odd a uh, very short distance stagger. There's not much traffic. So you get really large green bands, then it's possible again. But it, it becomes much more complicated, uh, nearly impossible to to get two perfect two-way coordination at intersections that are not evenly spaced right, through there. And then the other problem is, is that by traffic demand, you may not have as much green time available to you, or you shouldn't be using that much green time for that, that coordinated phase through there. And then as an agency, you just got to pick winners and losers, right? And you may decide, well, in the afternoon, it, this is going out from town. Uh, that's our primary corridor, our prime, in primary direction we're running in for commuters. So we're going to prioritize in the northbound. And we're going to line up all of that, and we're going to do the best we can for southbound. But northbound is the priority. And that's a pretty common thing to do. All right through there. And you may say that, yeah, okay, there's a lot of side seat traffic here at 2L, but it's not that important, right? It's more important to keep people moving through here in this corridor. We're going to make these people on the side street wait a little bit longer. So we're going to give them a larger green band for this coordinated movement just so we can get people to come through. So that again, that's as an agency, you have to make that decision. You know, how do you want to do that and get that moved through, uh, through there? So in coordination, um, the idea, again, is that we're keeping this, these cars moving, and we call those groups of cars platoons. And so here's our platoons. Um, and like we just said, that two-way progression, trying to get two-way coordination is going to be a trade-off, right? There's going to be winners and losers in that situation. More so than uh, doing a one-way progression. You can do one-way progression pretty well, and, and it works really well uh, and much easier to time uh, through that. Two-way progression is going to be uh, difficult through there and that's why they'll they'll pay you the big money right when you get your degree out is so that you can do that two-way progression for people right and coordination becomes more important when you've got these really tightly closely spaced signals particularly in downtowns and that's where you'll see it more often right the further signals are apart the traffic will spread out the platoons will kind of disperse over time so if you've got a half mile to a mile between signals those platoons start dispersing not completely you can definitely still still see the platoon as they arrive but they're uh, not as consistent right and people will spread out because they want to drive at different speeds uh, coming through there um, according to the highway capacity manual, you know, they break it down into different uh, types of progression and coordination. And the idea is progression is how well you move through signals, right? And by coordinating the signals, you get better progression, which gives you uh, nice, dense, I guess, platoons of cars, the better you do. And, and they've actually rated these and given it type numbers here, arrival types. And so for type one, it's very random. People arrive equally um, on red as they do green. And it's just not good progression at all. And then it gets better and better and better. And then finally down here in arrival type six is, is that you're... Um, your most of your platoons and most of your vehicles are arriving right on green and you've got it really well timed and everybody's moving through just fine uh, right through there and here's those arrival types and this is then we've also got a platoon ratio uh, which is ranking how well uh, cars are grouped up in these platoons and coming through the traffic signal uh, typically on green right as they move through and so this is our, our platoon ratio down here, which is a, a proportion of the percent of vehicles that are arriving on green. That's one of the indicators we've got, right? We like to have that high. We'd like to have all the vehicles, 100%, arriving when the light is green and nobody shows up when it's red. And that never happens, almost never happens right, through there. But the higher you can get the percentage, the better. All right. And so we typically like to be over 50%. We'd like to time our signals well. If you've got really good platoons and it's a coordinated uh, corridor, particularly a one-way uh, coordination through there, you can get pretty high uh, platoon ratio that, you know, you're timing those lights that, all, that you know, 70% of the cars are arriving on green. That's pretty good all right, through there. And then you divide that by the effective green, uh, by that ratio, the effective green over the cycling, which we've seen before is uh, when we used it in the saturation piece, right? 
Um, so what's what's their platoon ratio and then divided by the the amount of time that you've actually got green and then we can get our um, this is our platoon ratio RP here. So P is a proportion of vehicles that arrive during green. Here's our G over C, uh, which is kind of the effective amount of green you've got per cycle. And then here's our platoon ratio, right? And so our platoon ratio can equate over here to our rival type. So we would like to have, you can get up to two, uh, we like to have a really good platoon ratio, which means pretty much everybody's arriving on green and they're all in a tight platoon through that. Here's those arrival type descriptions again. We've we've already looked at these briefly uh, coming through there. Again, you can see this is um, this one, you know, very poor progression. <laughs> this type one is that you've got a platoon, but they all arrive right at the start of red. So they all have to wait the maximum amount of time, right? So that's terrible. <laughs> that's, that's bad. And here in the middle would actually be random. Random is better than packing everybody together in a dense platoon and having them arrive right at the start of the red signal, right? That's bad. Uh, through there. And then our best coming down here, the six, is that you've got a very uh, dense platoon, very uh, tightly packed in a group of cars and they all get there right at the start of the green signal and they're and all of them uh, arrive at a point where they don't have to wait at all right through there and so that's that's good uh, so that's what we look at and so now how do we get there is we look at the offset and so the offset is we we time the signal and you've learned now how to, to calculate the green time for signals and how to calculate um, the phase timing that you would need and what the optimal cycle length is and all that this last um, element we haven't looked at yet is offset and offset is and we just looked at it at the beginning of this of this lecture is how much uh, time difference there is between one signal and the next one downstream or upstream of it, right? And so that we're we're changing the the gears here. We're changing uh, that back and forth a little bit so that we can get those platoons to move through safely, right? So we're gonna change those offset values. And in this case, this is what the uh, program screen. Uh, this is an ASC3 controller from Econolite uh, through there, which is. Um, there's a lot of these out in the field, right? One of the more common types of controllers. It's been replaced now by a cobalt, but it's still pretty common. The screen looks fairly the same. So you can you can see here's what this offset value is. So this is where you would program this into the actual controller, but you you as the engineer have to decide what that offset value should be. All right, that's what we're talking about today is, is how do we get that All right, through there. And we usually, we usually link that offset to the major movement, which is usually phase two and six in the traffic signal uh, world through there. And so we can, we like to, uh, again, we'll, we'll move uh, one's start of green forward or backward. We're gonna move the lever and we're gonna move it forward or backward compared to the signals around it, right? And get through there. And so if we've got, here's our intersection one, intersection two, right? Here's the stop bar where you'd be waiting up to the next stop bar, right? Through there, measuring from those places where you're gonna stop, we've got 3,200 feet in here. It's 55 miles per hour, right? What should the offset difference be? Well, how long does it take you at 55 miles per hour to go from here to that point? Right, we, we can work that out. It's not. This is civil engineering math, right? Pretty simple equations. So we're just going to take that distance and divide it by our travel speed in feet per second. That's right. So the hardest part here is converting 55 miles per hour into feet per second, most likely. All right. So you know, it's it's 1.47. That's our. Uh, that's the. That's the correction factor for that, right? So you can. You can do this 3,200 feet divided by 55 miles per hour times 5,280 over 3,600. This is 1.47, all right? And that'll give you 40 seconds. So our offset, it should, if you're moving 55 miles per hour, it will take you 40 seconds to get from here to there. So if this uh, light turns green and 40 seconds later going northbound, this light turns green for the northbound movement, that should keep you from having to stop. You could travel 55 miles per hour and get right through there, all right? through there. And so that's that's our 80 feet per second, right? And we can look at how these cycles work. And so if we're going to start here is our effective green and our effective red, right? Through there. And let's say it's a 60 second cycle length, just to keep math easy, right? At zero offset, it looks like this. They both start at exactly the same time, right? And this one's 3,200 feet downstream, right? So again, in these time space diagrams, we have time is on the X axis and space or distance is on the y-axis over here. 
and we can just repeat these, right? So every cycle, you know, controllers just do this all day. As long as they're in that pattern, they'll just keep repeating it over and over. So every minute looks the same. If you release a platoon, right, it takes them 40 seconds to get there. At 40 seconds, it's red. And only a portion, that last portion, actually arrive at the next signal on green, right? And we can process that. And this is what it looks like if we do that ray tracing like we did before in class and show that how they get there. And then if we want to do that delay analysis, right, it looks like this, right? We, we plot in, these people have to, they come up here, they stop and they wait, they don't move forward. So this is our distance, right? They're stopped, so they're not moving at all. And then they finally get to go. And then you get that saturated flow rate, right? And then that queue clears out eventually through there, all right? So this is not great. That's not really what we want. So there's our platoon. Only a third of them actually arrived on green. Right, so out of the entire amount of time we had allotted for green to get through, which is just about 30 seconds out of the 60, right, only a third of those actually arrived on green at the next intersection. And then they had to wait for the people in front of them who got stopped by the red light to start moving before they could move, right? So this is not good. 33% arrival on green is not a good percentage. We'd like to get much better than that, right? And so if we plot this, right, so here's our percent on green versus our offset. And so let's try another one. We're scientists, you know, so let's try another one. Let's just move our offset 10 seconds, right? Well, how much, how many people, what percentage of that platoon now has arrived on green at the next intersection, right? So it, it's gone up, right, quite a bit more. So it looks more like about 67% or something, right? Then we tried 20 seconds, right? And now, since these are exactly the same timings, this green band is exactly the same width as that band, we can theoretically get the entire platoon to arrive on green. That's 100%. And that's 20 seconds of offset. And if we went further than that, let's go to 30 seconds of offset. Oh, now, now the last piece of that platoon is arriving on red. Okay, and so we've dropped our percentage of arrival on green and we dropped it even more. And now we're exactly zero. We can hit zero. That's, um, that's when you get fired, right? If you you line these up and your whole platoon arrives on red, that's exactly what you don't want. <laughs> Unless you were prioritizing the southbound movement, maybe they're all arriving on green now. So maybe that's the only reason that you'd want to do that. And you can see, you can kind of just keep walking through this and you can see how we can plot the optimization curve and we can find a magic number. In this case, it was fairly easy because we kept this problem easy. Um, that you can get 100% arrival on green. All right, that's rare that you'd ever see that in practice, but there is a peak, there is a maximum, and you can maximize what that arrival on green is. And that's the best offset, at least for that one movement you're looking at. All right, and this is a, a, a live, this is what a live view from an operating traffic signal would look like on a central command system. Uh, through there, and here's actually where it says, which is what's going to show you where that uh, offset is. And we can actually run this thing, and you can see it activating in person. And again, in this case, phase two is northbound, phase six is southbound. This is at, in Mishawaka at Grape and Edison, All right? And right now, so these are green, so three and seven, the left turns on east and westbound are moving, and then they are going to turn off. Here in a second, down here you can see this is the phase number up here. You can see how much time they've gotten, right? And they were finally forced off after uh, 10 seconds on that. And now they're activating uh, four and eight. The east and west through movements are running now. So here's four and eight. And you're they're counting up time through that. And, right, and under here is the, the cycle time. Here's the cycle time up here in this little timer. Uh, number and the offset is set to 73 as you can see what the 73 is is set for it is running at 73 seconds of offset and it is programmed for 73 so everyone's happy all right so right now it is running the way it's supposed to through there and you can see we've now we've moved over to two and six the main through movements through here and now they're timing up and they're programmed to go up to 56 maximum for their split and we'll see how far they go. This G means it gapped out. It means there wasn't enough traffic there to hold four and eight until it got to 28 or 22 seconds for their splits. And so it gave that time back to the main movement, two and six, which is uh, by far the largest movement out on this intersection. All right, so that's how this is working. Here's where you'd find the offset in this programming screen all right, through here. So it's a, it's a little prettier screen than the text one uh, we saw before on that. The other way we look at these things is through this. This is a time-space diagram. 
uh, through here. And it looks like we've, we've seen this before. Uh, this is a real, this one was from a real inner, uh, corridor. Again, in Mishawaka, it starts at Grapen University. This is the Grape Road Corridor. I could only show enough in my screen to get down to Grapen Day. And you can see each one has a different offset. So here it's telling you what the programmed offset is for each one of those intersections. All right through there and they're all different and the reason they're different is we're trying to get these green bands and you can see here's those green bands coming through and Grape and Douglas is a problem. Grape and Douglas has a lot of side road traffic. Douglas is very busy. Uh, we have a lot of more green time on Grape at these other intersections but at Douglas there's so much side road traffic uh, which is during this time, <laughs> the yellow and the red phases, right? Um, that we just, we couldn't give that big of a green band to Grape Road. So they do have to, you all have to stop. If you're headed southbound, you can follow that diagonal, right? That's matching your speed. Uh, and this is set to be 40 miles per hour. So if you match your speed and then you'd have to wait a little bit and then you can go again. You can uh, skate right on through at Edison Lakes. You can get down here. You're still on the green band, right? If you... Uh, calculate that trajectory, you're still going to get through on the green. So you had to wait for a little bit at Grape and Douglas because this one has so much side road traffic. Uh, it was really hard to time that way. If you're going northbound, you'd start over here and you'd follow that. You'd have to wait and then you could go again. You'd have to wait and go again. All right. And actually southbound is prioritized on Grape Road. So it's uh, during this is pattern three, the afternoon pattern for Grape and it's prioritized for southbound. And so you, you do get, you can see these uh, green bands, right? If you started up here at university here, you could get all the way through all those intersections on green and never have to stop, right? So good job. Um, so we've timed this well. And so you do get this nice green band all the way through on that. And right now Grape and Edison, you're like, well, our Edison Lakes here, I mean, did we time that right? I mean, it's never turning red, right? So what would cause that? So, so this is caused because there's nobody waiting to turn uh, on to Grape Road from Medicine Lakes, right? This is a lower volume road typically, and there's nobody out there right now. And so this is an actuated signal. It won't, it won't stop the main line traffic until someone's actually waiting on the side road to uh, come across or, or merge turn on to grape, right? And nobody's out there during this time span, right? So this is, uh, what, one, two, three, four minutes. Over that four minute period, nobody was there. And you'll see this late at night, you know, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., you can get you know, half an hour and that light never turns red you know, for the main line because there's nobody on the side street to get through. So this is great, right? This is going to line up with everybody's platoon getting through because it's never going to switch through there. So that's an unusual case. Um, there's a better description if you follow these links. If you go to the notes and click on these links, these are on YouTube, you can see what uh, this looks like as it moves. And so this is a real-time uh, graphic that comes up and so as a centralized management system you can see these things and it can show you got a lot of cool tools for helping you manage your signals better and you can watch this in real time and see how it's operating in real time because what your theoretical programming is and what's actually happening in the, in the real world quite often a little bit different and uh, there's could be some tweaks and adjustments needed and that's what this is so if you follow that link in the notes then you'll be able to see the video and instead of trying to play the video in here which sometimes is kind of you're recording the video of a video playing it, it gets uh it stutters around a lot and isn't very smooth so i'm not going to try to do that i'll just show you the static graphic uh, here there's also this other link which goes to a youtube video of a real-time map view which is kind of what we just looked like looked at in that that map view but you can zoom in and see how the signals are operating uh, and getting real time so just give you a feel for what a real time uh, system works like or works as this is uh and we're going to try i just said it's not very uh, good often to try to take a video of a video playing but i'm going to show you this one this was a, a project we worked on uh, as a study uh, last year and but this is this link through here is coordinated. This is the south end of Main Street moving into Union uh, through there. Actually, it goes into church and then it becomes uh, Union later. And, and if we follow, like, here's this big platoon of cars. Watch as they come north. This is sped up four times faster than normal. Watch those lead cars. They get all the way through. All right. So that's what we want. That's a coordinated pattern through here. This one is the, uh, this one's not operated by the city. It's operated by the state. So it's not always in, in good coordination. You can watch cars here. We're building them up a little bit here. And now they release. You can watch this. This is a very small platoon come through. 
they come down and then they get there. This one's actually timed well, right? They got there right as the light was turning green and they can flow through. So you can kind of watch this and see how um, a coordinated system should work with, with many little cars here in a traffic simulation and how they're working uh, through that. So again, we'll watch, uh, I think we're about to end here. Uh, but when this light turns green, you can see this platoon is going to move. Um, so the left turns go first. And now we've got our northbound platoon. That light turned green just in time. That one's green. That one's green. They can sail on through. Right? And that's what we prefer to have. And again, this is a simulation. Uh, if someone's out pushing the ped buttons, then it will often throw off our coordination uh, through that because ped times usually take longer than the vehicle times to cross. Uh, through that. So that's an example of that uh, through there. And then a few other links that I'd like you to watch on your own. Uh, so this is looking at what preemption is. And preemption is our kind of our last piece. And so that's the end of coordination. Preemption is uh, moving special vehicles through uh, signals uh, and giving them priority. So we're preempting the normal programming and we're allowing particularly emergency vehicles to get through safely. We also use preemption at railroads. And so if you're if you've got a railroad track real close to the traffic signal, all right, we'll we'll pick up the when the gates go down, or actually slightly before they go down, you can send a signal to the controller saying, hey, a train's coming, and we'll change the programming on the traffic signal to A, clear out anybody waiting that could have been parked on the tracks. And then we don't let anybody enter that side uh, through there once uh, so that there's no backup or waiting at the gates or sometimes people will try to get around the gate, you know, and so forth. So to be safer, we'll preempt that and then we'll just run uh, cars on the uh, parallel road and give them all the green time as they come through because um, the, the gates are down and there's no point in trying to back up, you know, the, you'll gridlock this intersection if you let uh, this through and there's a lot of cars trying to move straight through, right, through that. So that's railroad preemption. Uh, there's a VISIM uh, simulation that shows what it looks like uh, in a traffic simulation model uh, going through the same. All right, through there, emergency preemption are particularly ambulances, police cars, and fire trucks. And they've got an emitter on the front. You can kind of see this little uh, ray out here. The older ones were a uh, special uh, wavelength of light. And so this is an, a detector of that special wavelength. And when, it de when the vehicle is approaching, it's got its light on, which is not visible. So it's a different wavelength than you can see. Um, when uh, it's beaming that light ahead as it beams that light ahead this detects it and it gives them the green light and it actually it'll give them the green light and nobody else and so it keeps everybody else out of the intersection through there and hopefully it normally it detects them far enough down the road that by the time they get there it has already switched over to green for them because it takes you know a few seconds to, to transition it has already switched over to green for them and they can roll right through and this is a really good video um, made by the manufacturer of the one of the preemption systems showing how cars can easily get through on the green and what a difference it makes so they give you examples of vehicles that have preemption at sig and the signals have it too and can receive it and places where there is no preemption and how much difference there is uh, with the uh, how easily it is for an emergency vehicle to get through right so it makes a big difference in how they act so in a more it's typically in more of a denser urban environment we would use preemption uh, through that in high traffic locations lower traffic ones it's probably of limited value uh, or extra bonus there and it's it's you know fair bit of work to put all this in and program it and everything uh, through there in in heavier traffic situations and in particular particularly uh, denser urban environments, um, this is a fairly common thing uh, through that. So you can watch those videos again on your own and see how that, that preemption works. And that'll bring us to the end of traffic signals.